encountered a Chamorro, whether it was a Northern Mariana Chamorro or a Guam Chamorro. It was pleasant to realize that they were Chamorro and that here we were, you know, thousands of miles away from home. But the thing that authenticated the fact to me, I'm a 1952 birth Chamorro, was when they spoke Chamorro and I spoke Chamorro. And not only did it authenticate that, it was almost like the implementer that says, yeah, you're real. Mm -hmm. You're saying you're from California and your last name is Mendiola. It doesn't mean that much to me. It just means that you have Chamorro blood in you. But when language was spoken between the two Chamorros, there was just some music that was connected. I wanted to, to perhaps maybe in the course of this discussion and in the course of studying this, the impact of language when we're scattered, so to speak, across the earth, and yet when two meet and share that common language, there's something there that's really very important. And so again, language may be a vehicle in which we, as a people, can continue to identify ourselves and appropriate the good things that perhaps a colonizer may impose on us, but stand up for those that are what we call oppressive. And I think there, there can be a blend for us to do that. But we have to be just as smart as that. We have to achieve the levels. Um, I'm a physician, and I've achieved the level as far as high as I can within that building level. You as a PhD also probably can claim that, the fact that you're a full professor at a noted university. But we're appropriating their styles, and in essence, their wisdom and maybe we need to take a look and see what are the wisdoms that we have and take that, blend it, and maybe have an amalgam of what is that and perhaps as people we could go forward. And I'm sure that the president that sits to my right shares that because we're about the same with regard to the generation. Post-war, opportunities were given. We took it, or our parents forced us to take it, as he said. And we've achieved levels that now we can't speak. And if we have to speak to an Obama, if we have to speak to the Palajero down in Malaysia, we can still do that. But part of that is because we have that common line line with that. I'd like to hear a little bit maybe more of that. Maybe you do know that there are other scholars that are looking at that specifically. But it was an observation. Yeah. Authenticated that you're tomorrow because you could say Lanya or, or Mami. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, all the bad words. Yeah. Yeah. Roger that. Okay, that's all I wanted. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. And, that, and I'm glad you brought that up because I, you know, I pondered to what extent I would uh, address issues of tomorrow language. But I think it's, I mean, it's it's probably the issue. It's probably the vehicle, I think. Um, and it's yet another example of um, the way um, Chamorros have appropriated higher education through Chamorro immersion and uh, you know, linguistics, etc. Uh, the dilemma or the consequence of the of the migration is that is that we are for, more far removed. Um, newer generations of Chamorros on Guam and the Mariana Islands are are somewhat removed from their language, but it's even more profound um, on the U.S. mainland. But there are efforts to um, implement Chamorro language classes, etc. It's just difficult to do it in an immersion kind of way. And then the other part of your comment about appropriation of, you know, like the colonizer system, I think there are ways in which we appropriate it, and part of the appropriation is that we make it our own in an indigenous way, so that storytelling is actually a legitimate form of science now. We just call it oral history. You know, we call it an academic thing, but it is it is native. So there is, there, there is a, a real appropriation where it's not simply like native people using using higher education, it, it's really making it their own. So I think that's going on, and there is there is more scholarship on, on language issues and spirituality. So thank you. Okay, um, how about another round of applause for uh, Dr. Michael Paris? And of course, uh, he'll be around for uh, a few minutes, and then uh, he'll be around for the rest of the week. So. Uh, before uh, we leave the program, I wanted to uh, introduce uh, Senator Ben Pangilinan, who's with us today. As well as, of course, Regent uh, Dr. Chris Paris. And uh, former Senator uh, Bob Pritzky.
Thank you for coming.